Pro Guides family, I have a special video for you guys today. It's a little bit more personal, but I think it will help a lot of you guys who are aspiring content creators or aspiring pro players as well. But just to give you guys a little bit of a background on kind of what got me into this scene and what got me started in content creation. I started making videos when I was 15 years old, and it was just a really fun way to express myself. I wasn't really good at expressing myself in other ways, so I really looked to content creation to help me do that. When I started off in content creation, it was not something that was very popular at the time. YouTube wasn't really that big. Video creation wasn't really a viable career it really started as a passion more than anything. And, you know, I had to make a lot of sacrifices to go into that. A lot of my friends were going out, having fun, going to parties, and a lot of the times I would just stay in the video editing room and edit videos. And that was a choice that I made because I really had the passion for it. Entering into this space, entering into becoming a pro player or becoming a content creator, you really have to have the passion for it. It's not something you can just lightly do. It has to be burning within you. And if you do feel like you have that, then this video is definitely something you gotta watch. And now taking down Team Solo Med at Madison Square Garden to be your 2015 Summer Split Champion. As I started to enter the esports scene, specifically in League of Legends five years ago, I started to develop relationships with a lot of pro players. I was lucky enough to film all of the big LCS players at the time, like Doublelift, even Piglet, which was super cool. And I started to actually study what made them so good at the game. I started to study their motivations, I started to study their routine, their schedule, what they ate. I actually knew a lot of what made a pro player a pro player back in the day. And eventually as other games came out like Smash Bros or Fortnite, I started to work with a lot of the best pro players in those scenes as well and just ask them like how they got so good at those games. I mean, I've had some crazy times in the esports industry. For all of you League of Legends veterans, I don't know if you guys are watching this channel, but I used to play poker with a lot of the big team owners. Here's the owner of Team Liquid, the owner of TSM. One of the owners of TSM actually brought me to a Lakers game and he had one of the Lakers championship rings in his pocket. And he's like, yo, check this out. I was like, what the hell? But I've had some crazy times at esports, going to TwitchCon, going on these crazy journeys, and hopefully all of this experience will help you guys out in your careers as well. So the debate is for a lot of people who wanna make money in esports and gaming in general, they're like, okay, should I become a pro player and win tournament money? Or should I become entertaining and become like a content creator? So the answer is it really depends on the game. So a lot of games will actually have a lot of prize pool money, like Dota 2, for example, but they won't have a huge content scene. So you, it's not like you can become a massive content creator in Dota 2 and just be like, oh, I'm gonna become, you know, make a lot of money doing that and, and my life is gonna be great. You really have to focus on pro play as a Dota 2 player. But let's say you're Fortnite, you have that option of doing both. So you can really try and win money doing the Fortnite pro scene, or you can be somebody like Courage, who is just very, very entertaining at the game and hasn't really had the same accolades when it comes to pro play. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> And the best of both worlds is somebody like Mr. Fresh Asian, who's able to just magically do both. And that's really hard to do, but it's definitely possible. So if you're gonna make the decision between those two, you have to look at yourself honestly and say, hey, do I enjoy communicating? Do I enjoy helping people and talking with people and, and interacting with a community? If that's more of what you're interested in, then totally go on the content side. But if you look at yourself and you say, hey, I'm really, really skilled at this game. All I need to do is just keep practicing, keep getting better, and you just want to win, you just want to get better at the game, then really I would urge you guys to focus on streaming and becoming a pro player instead. Because there's a lot of money in the prize pool right now, and let's say you're trying to create content, let's say you're gonna be streaming a lot, you're probably so focused on the game itself that you won't be able to interact with the community as much. So it's gonna be hard for you to really focus on that entertainment and that community. So even if you really just focus on the game and you just wanna become a pro player, you should still be streaming. Okay, so let's say your parents are not really that supportive of you becoming a pro player or how much time you're spending actually playing. 
My advice for you guys, if you're having some trouble with the parenting and everything like that, I think just try and share with them videos like this or other videos that show how big this can get. And this is really only the beginning of esports. And the potential for making money in this field is actually becoming a reality now, which is pretty amazing, actually. It's still not a sport. Well, again, it's a it's game. 20 million people who are watching the damn thing. <laughs> and the money they got to be making, crazier than the ones who big money to watch it. You can't blame your parents for it because they grew up at a different time. And what's going on right now in the economy, what's going around with like a lot of ways of making money, doesn't make sense to them because the way that they made money was just becoming a lawyer or becoming a doctor, stuff like that. They want the best for you. They want you to have the security and have a good life. And sometimes they're right, but I think in this case, this very specific time in history where gaming is becoming so important to people, I think that taking that risk, at least for a little bit of time, is really important. And I think that a lot of good parents will understand that maybe people should be spending a little bit more time investing their time in growing those skills, like content creation, like video games. They're actually giving college scholarships for video, for video, for video gaming. You're kidding. Uh, and it's even gone to the point that now the government has acknowledged video professional video gamers uh -huh as athletes. Right, and, and how they could that be? So, so, so look, first and foremost, I care about my son and his passion. And he's, they have skills he is or they're, they're, Look, they, we can, I'm not here to yeah, debate the say, level yeah. at which it, but, they what, fit and slot explain, in between, you know, between basketball yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, they are the digital athletes. They're professional thumb, digital thumb, athletes. Thumb, thumb. And let's say you're a content creator in gaming, and even if gaming doesn't take off, your gaming career isn't as good as you wanted it to be, and you can't make too much money off of it, well, guess what? You learned a bunch of amazing skills. You learned how to make videos, which is super important today. You learned how to connect with a community. That's really valuable for a lot of jobs. So this type of career, if you frame it in the right way to your parents, I think a lot of them will react differently and a lot of them will feel a lot more positive about it. Because the last thing you want in life is to live in regret. And if you were younger than 22, that's the time to develop those skills. Like I was editing videos when I was 15. If I started really late, like I am now, I probably wouldn't be good at editing videos. And so it's really important to start early and to really just not regret that you didn't have that opportunity. And tell your parents that, I'm sure a lot of them will understand. And another thing that was really important for me is this one phrase that my dad used to tell me, and it was, it was the Nike phrase. He said, never give up. And I can't stress how important that is because you look at a lot of the famous YouTubers and the famous streamers, they started so far back. They started six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago. You look at some of the stories that we posted, like the Cypher story. Like these guys, they just kept going and they had the passion and they never ever gave up. Giving up was not an option for them. And if you have to make sacrifices in your life, like let's say you know you have to do schoolwork, which school is very important, like you're gonna learn a lot of stuff from school. Let's say you have to do schoolwork, well, you might have to sacrifice something else, like maybe going out with your friends in order to really focus on what it is you wanna do, which is your career in gaming. I started homeschooling because for me to stream six hours a day and compete in tournaments, I wouldn't be able to go to school. I would miss way too many days. So my schedule is a tutor comes over three days a week. I'm gonna be honest, it's kind of boring, but for me to want to do like streaming, everything like this, I have to do what I have to do. Okay, so for you guys who want to become pro players, this part is kind of hard to say because I, I haven't enjoyed doing this before, but it actually is really important you have to play with the best people. So I actually have a personal story with this. One of my friends got really good at the game while I kind of started to really not be that good. And I would always want to play with him. And I was be like, yeah, let's duo, let's let's go out and let's, let's play, let's play squads together. And he ended up just not wanting to play with me. And I was like kind of upset. I was kind of like taken aback. I was like, dude, what the hell? What? Like, why don't you want to play with me? He told me it's because he wanted to improve at the game. And it was really kind of, it made me feel bad at the time. But just looking at kind of what made me better as a person, I understood why he did that. And the reason why you wanna do that is because you want to be around people that not only inspire you, but that make you better. A lot of times what I see people do is they play with people who are not as good as them. 
Hey, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. Wait. No, 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 no. Why? 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 Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, Want to play some soccer? Soccer. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. You can have fun and enjoy yourself, no problem. But if you want to get really good at the game, sometimes you're going to have to make those sacrifices and you're going to have to play with people who are better than you. If you fight with someone who is better than you, your body will want to do whatever it takes to adapt to the scenario. If you put yourself in that environment where you're playing with better people, you will naturally get better as a result. And on the flip side, if you play with players who are worse, you will just feel better about yourself. You're like, oh yeah, I'm just really good at this game, but you won't have the incentive to grow and become better. It's not gonna feel good at first, but it's going to mean the world of difference in your gameplay. Um, didn't think I'd get to where I you know, am right now. I think I put don't get ego, because I've always looked up to, like in the past, pro players who have been like really humble. Um, I think that's a really like nice thing to have to be. Um, so I never wanted to be like arrogant or, you know, just have an ego, think I'm better than everybody. I'd always want to be humble and just, you know, just be, be nice. Okay guys, so another tip for you guys that's really important is staying humble. So what does it mean to actually be humble? It's a growth mentality. It means that you are willing to continue learning and you know that you haven't reached your potential yet. You know you that you're not the best you can be. So you're open to ideas of asking questions on like how to get better at something. How can I improve becoming a better content creator? How can I improve becoming a better player? Like there are some pro players who have that mentality and they will continue growing and growing and growing because they don't think that they're the best yet. A lot of the pro players that I worked with initially would have this mindset. And if you look at one of the best League of Legends players in the world, Doublelift, he actually used to be extremely cocky back in the day. How good is it to get a pentakill at the LCS All-Stars? Everyone else is trash. Right here on the show. <laughs> everyone else is trash. I'm probably gonna smash everyone, so have a good time. Rookshot gonna land, he finds Ninja for the start, a double it gets a snipe. The downtime line again. But guess what? He never won anything. Yeah, he was really good, but he was capped by the fact that he thought he was the best and he never won as a result. But then he shifted his mentality. And I actually interviewed him about this and it was really interesting. He said, when he started to become more humble, he recognized that he could learn things from coaches, from other players. And guess what? He ended up winning a ton. And that shift in his mentality was really the key to his success. And I think that it's really important for all you guys to remain humble as well. Even if you see some success throughout the years, you can get even better. You can still ask those questions. You can still be a curious person and maintain being a humble person as well. So the number one mistake that I see people make is that they really want to make something perfect and they're not going to publish or they're not going to stream or create any video that's just not perfect. So they ended up postponing that until the perfect time. And I think that that's a big mistake because you look at a lot of the creators and a lot of the pro players that are really famous and they actually just start uploading without making something perfect. So if you look at Courage, for example, this is his first video that he made, and it's just literally him in his room, and he's just talking. It's pretty low quality, and this was five years ago. Hey guys, what's going on? Courage here, be you my first ever video here today. I am so excited to get this channel started, finally. The new year is here, and I am ready to provide great content for you guys throughout this next year and for the future. And that was before he was famous, before he got any views. I mean, you can see it's, it's only got like 1K views. Some of them don't even break 1K, but he just started doing it. And that was so important. That was the same thing that we ended up doing as well. We just said, hey, let's just get into it. We can worry about the quality later, and then we can just focus on our upload schedule, just focus on getting it done. And that's how we started, and it, and it really worked for us. If you look at other people like Ninja, for example, he was posting before he got famous. So he wasn't waiting for the right time to actually get famous. I mean, look at this, eight years ago. Hi guys, what's going on? Uh, this is going to be my new YouTube webpage. It's uh, youtube.com slash ninjas hyper. My basement, there's my mix amp. This is how I get my microphone to work. And here's my, this is the monitor that I use the game. So even Faye Sway started three years ago and he's super young. So there was no real intention to make the perfect video. Like he actually made these videos that had nothing to do with Fortnite. This was Call of Duty. 
you know, he made a lot of Call of Duty videos back in the day just because he, he wanted to communicate, wanted to become a YouTuber, and so he just did it. But he didn't really become famous until Fortnite came out. And people could say that's luck, but it's actually not. He's putting himself in a position where if a new game comes out and it's like, it blows up, well, guess what? He's already been uploading for a year. He already has a small following, but if he just starts playing that big game that comes out, he's already in a great position to become famous. And so you really have to start now. You can't just wait for the perfect time. You have to start right now. So one way to do this is just to get in front of the camera and just start trying it out. Because eventually, at first, you're gonna be nervous and you're gonna be a bit reserved. You're gonna start interacting with people in your chat who are gonna come. You're gonna start building that loyal fan base. But eventually, if you keep doing that every single day, you'll become way more comfortable. Even if you think your personality is kind of lame or sucks, there will be people who really connect with you. And there's a great example of a streamer by the name of Disguised Toast. I was really obsessed with Hearthstone like three years ago, so I just kept watching him. He was really boring, but everyone loved to troll him and everyone loved to just shit on him at the time. And for whatever reason, he just blew up. He became one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. And you have to ask yourself, you're like, why did that happen? The thing is, even though his personality was kind of just boring or whatever, there was something about him that you just loved. You loved to go back and just interact with him in chat. Like he was very responsive to chat. He did a lot of fun things and he has a, he has a really good personality. You just wouldn't know it from just the very beginning. And I'm sure he was probably a little bit nervous at the beginning too. So for a lot of you guys, you might think, hey, you know, I don't think I have a really big personality like Courage, for example, or like Ninja. That's okay. You don't have to have a big personality like those guys because people like Disguised Toast, who's more just like intellectual, kind of subdued, kind of, kind of quiet, they can succeed as well. So if you're like him and you're a little bit kind of awkward and shy, you can totally succeed. So five years ago, uh, a little bit before Fortnite, the gaming community was pretty toxic. I'd play games like CSGO, I'd play games, League of Legends was really toxic, as all of you know. Suck my I will give you the privilege of licking my balls. And amidst that toxicity, a lot of streamers and a lot of content creators would upload stuff that was also toxic because guess what? It was relatable. And as you know, relatability is really important. So they'd upload stuff like this video or this video, but things have changed now. That was my fault. No, it wasn't your fault. We just ran into so many people at one time. That wasn't anybody's fault. No, I dragged you down because you're like a pro and I'm just like this noob. No, no, that wasn't it at all. We, we could have won that. We got really far together. That was great. We're, me and you were just having fun. We could have won that. You did a great job that entire time. You know, you might see bullying every now and then, you might see some toxicity every now and then as well. But I think the overwhelming majority of people really just want to be with someone who's chill. And it's just an enjoyable place to pass the time with someone. It's just try and remain positive, have a positive mindset. And I think that that will benefit you guys too. What up? Oh my, here's a gun, here's a gun, here's a gun, here's a gun. LeBron James. Bro, come on, what are you doing? I'm not gonna kill me with those. Try again, throw another one. LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for the video, guys. I hope this really helped you. If you guys leave a like on this video, I'll probably make another one. I think this could be a good series for aspiring content creators and aspiring pro players alike. There's a lot more to cover, like what programs to use for your content creation, how to stream, how to set up an actual stream. That could be really useful to you guys. So if you leave a like, it'll help me know if I should make another video like this. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. Remember all these takeaways and watch this video again if you need just a reminder of what you think is going to be good for you. It's a tough journey. It's a really long journey to become either of these two things. But if you have the passion and you have the grit and the commitment, then you can definitely succeed doing both right now because there's no better time than now to become a pro player or to become a content creator. I really enjoyed making this video for you guys and I'll see you in the next one.